coming today? Good. Good. Okay. Where are you coming for uh, here? Why? Are uh, you sitting here? I uh, came to learn about the Bible. Oh uh, yeah, about the Bible. Yeah. Okay. Okay. What is our Bible study name? Club name? F Bible. Yes. F Bible. Okay. Very good. Okay. Do you want to stand up? Okay. Oh yeah. Okay. Pray first. Okay. All right. Dear Father, we just thank you for this time at Epic Bible Club, and we just thank you for the kids that are here. Lord, we just pray that you will bless our time, help us to have good listening ears on, and help us to listen to what you're teaching us today. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay. Okay. Let's make warm up. Okay.
roots. All right, so. Hey, that was fun. We're, we're practicing how to put on the armor of God, right? I can't see his back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right. It's hiding because underneath. Hiding underneath right. his breastplate of righteousness, it looks like. Okay, so this is from the book of, what book is this? Ephesians 6, 1. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to. It's 11. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Looked at it wrong. Sorry. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand. That means stand your ground. The soldier has to stand their ground. Can, are they supposed to run away? No. no. They're supposed to stand and fight the enemy. That you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. Any idea what schemes are? Thank <laughs> you. 
Praise the God. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. Yes. Um, I want to, I want to stand against the devil one. The stand schemes. against or schemes? Schemes. Schemes. That's like tricks. What do you want to do for that? Um, kicking. Kicking. Mm -hmm. Okay. What happened? Who, 
Name somebody who came back to life. Wow. Well, Dorcas. Dorcas, okay. Who else? Her, her name was also Tabitha. Oh, yeah, but she was a name for St. She made clothes for the saints. That's right. And was there somebody's daughter who died? A little girl who died? I think, well, I don't know that we were given her name, but I believe it's Jairus' daughter. But think of somebody else who was dead for like four days in a tomb and came out all wrapped up. Who is that? Lazarus. Lazarus. Remember him? Were there anybody, was there anybody in the Old Testament that died? And came back to life. There were Elijah and Elisha, both raised some boys from the dead, right? A little boy. Well, what happened to all those boys, people? They died again. But Jesus, when he returned to life, did he die again? No. No, he did not die again. He had a glorified body. Right? So, and here's our Bible verse that tells us all about the fact that Christ died, right? He no, he died. Jesus died, right? We know that. But why did he die? It says right here. Why did he die? Oh, Hosanna. Um, for our sins. For our sins. Why what what's important about that? What is sin? What is sin? It's disobeying God. And, and it's not good for you. Um, no, it, it, it's not good for you. Okay, let's try that again. It's, it's anything we think. Because, you know what? We can be asleep and, and still be sinning. Sin, we have sinful thoughts that go through our head even while we're asleep. We can't hardly even stop those. But can they, can they, can Jesus have died for those too? Yeah. And what else? We can think, you could be sitting there with a smile on your face saying, I don't like that person. I wish they would just leave me alone. Right? You can be thinking all kinds of things and have a smile on your face at the same time. Right? <laughs> yeah. So our thoughts are, we have to be careful of what we're thinking, but our thoughts can be sin. What we say, what we say can be sin, and what we do, or maybe it's what we don't do. Like if you don't obey your parents, okay, you may be doing something that's not terrible, but if you're not obeying your parents, then it's still sin, right? All that sin, and it all breaks God's laws and makes God sad, right? So, that's what Christ did. He died for our sins. This is a part of the, what's that big word? Gospel, right? This is part of what the gospel is. That Christ died for our sins. But how do we know? What does this part tell us? According to... The scriptures. We didn't make this up, did we? This, this is in God's word, right? He put it there for us to know. It's in the scriptures. God said it. We did not come up with this plan. Man didn't come up with this plan. Because every other religion in the entire world does not take care of sin. Only Christianity. Only God takes care of sin through his son, Jesus Christ, and he died and paid for our sin, right? And it says so where? In the scriptures. Scriptures. What am I first? <laughs> and the front part. It says so in the scriptures that Christ died for our sins. All others, all other religions, they want you to work and be a good person. And try harder. To, but God says, no, you can't try harder. He says in his word 
that no matter what we do, it's all for nothing. It's our all our good works for nothing. They're like dirty rags. You ever seen a dirty rag? Yeah. Or, I know. And some rags, you know, after a while you just have to throw them away or they become really they become like auto rags or other kind of rags because they get they just keep getting stained, right? And the stains don't come out after a while. That's what it is when we don't have our sins taken care of by the blood of Jesus Christ. And having because that's what he did on the cross. He washed our sins away, right? What what's the song? Nothing but the blood. No. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood. And then what else? It tells us what? It tells us that we're a sinner. It tells us that God told us all about it. Right? This verse. And then it says, what happened to Jesus? What happened to him? What happened to him? He died on the cross for our sin. And then what happened? What did they he look at the picture? Again. No, look at the picture. He was... Buried, right? He was put in a tomb because his body was really, really dead. Okay? Some people don't believe that Jesus actually died. They think it was all fake. But he was really, really dead. How do we know? They what did the soldier do to him? They stabbed him with a with a spear, right? And then what came out? Blood and water, because he'd always he was already dead, and so the blood and the water was already separated. And which proved to the soldier he was dead, and that, so they didn't go around and break his legs like they did to the other men next to him. They broke their legs. Why would they do that? Yes, because they used their legs to get stripped out like to get a breath. They had to push up with their legs to get a breath. But once they broke their legs, they couldn't do that anymore. And then it would help them to die faster. But they didn't do that to Jesus because he was already dead. He was dead and he was buried and he was put in a tomb. And then what? And that he rose again. Abigail, this is your favorite part. He, he rose again the third day, just like the Bible said, right, according to the scriptures. All through the Bible, Jesus told us, and God told us, that he would rise again. Psalm 22, Isaiah 53, and then all through the New Testament, Jesus says he was going to come back alive, right? He told us many times, in many ways, but the disciples, they didn't get it. They didn't understand. But once he rose again and he began to teach them, then they began to understand. So, and here's a, this one is about our shoes. It says, Romans 10, 15, And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace bring, and bring glad tidings of good things. This is what we're supposed to be doing, right? Well, did, what was that first song we sang? Let's get started and tell of Jesus, right? And we we're going to go and tell the whole world about our Savior and our friend. So we're going to, this is what God wants us to do. Does that mean that all of us are going to become preachers? No. No, but look, is that guy talking to a whole crowd? No. no, he's talking to one person. All you have to do is tell one person. And maybe that person will tell another person. We just tell whoever God leads us to, to tell all about the good news of Jesus Christ. And the next was it says, oh, oh, look at that. I wonder what that's all about. Shaking hands. What is it? Why does it say the gospel of peace, do you think? Do 
you know that we were. Oh, wait, who's going? First, we get to have peace with God. God. It doesn't matter. It's just, it's just showing that making peace with someone. Then we're not an enemy anymore. So, and then we're going to also have peace with man, our fellow man. We can have peace with each other. Okay. And here it says, look what it says. What does it call us up here in this verse? It says, Romans 5.10, For if when we were enemies, did you know you were the enemy of God? When we are born, we are born in sin. And we are born an enemy of God. Do you know that? We are born an enemy of God. We, because who, who do we want to please when we're first born? Who does a baby want to be? Want to please? Yeah, themselves. Why, why do they cry? Feed me. Take care of me. Pick me up. Do something. Keep, take care of me. Do something. I'm going to be crying until you do something with me. Right? That's what they do. Babies do that. And do, that's what we all want. We all want our own way. Right? Because, so we are his enemies. And it says, if, for if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, that means that we now have our sins taken care of. Jesus paid for our sins. But is everybody saved? Jesus paid for the sins of the whole world, didn't he? Yeah. Isn't that what it tells us in the Bible? That he paid for the sins of the world? Yeah. But is everybody saved? No, they have to believe in him too. Right, because this part, being reconciled, we shall be saved by... His life. Yeah, we're not saved by his death. We're reconciled by his death. He paid for our sins. He paid for everyone's sins, but unless you have his life, you're not truly saved. But how do we get his life? How do we get his life? Well, um, we need to believe in him. Oh, we put our faith and trust in what Jesus did in reconciling us, right? It says, therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. We can also have peace with God once we have trusted in him, right? And then we, he gives us his life. Now, does that mean Jesus jumps in us? No, no it doesn't mean that. What does he do? He sends the Holy, the Holy Spirit to live in us and give us his life living in us. Right? Okay. So, and there's... See, let us therefore follow after the things which make for peace and things wherewith we may one edify one another. Because once Jesus is living inside of us through the Holy Spirit, guess what he wants? He wants us to become enemies with everybody else, right? Mm. No. No, he does not want us to be enemies with people. He wants us to do what he did. How does he, what does he think of other people? What does he think about Anybody that you might meet? How does he treat? What what is he what does God want you to do? He wants you to hate them? No, love no. them. No. Love them, that's right. We're supposed to have love for them. We're supposed to also go out and start making peace with people. Not making trouble with people, right? We're not going out to meet people so that we can be a problem. Jesus said, here, he said, finally, brethren, farewell, be perfect. Can we be perfect? But Jesus can be perfect in us, can't he? We, we, as long as we're allowing Christ to be in control of us, then there's, because Jesus can't be imperfect. Okay. Be of good comfort, be of one mind, and live in peace. What does it say? Live in peace, and the God of love and peace shall be with you. We're to live in peace with one another. And that's, but nobody.
anybody can do that if they don't know Jesus Christ. Because God is peace. Jesus Christ is peace. He brings us peace with God so that he no longer judges us as a sinner, right? Because he, when, he, when God looks at us, does he see our sin? If we put our faith and trust in him? Yeah. Does he? No, what does he see? He sees the, we learned it last week, um, with the breastplate of righteousness. He sees the righteousness of Christ and not our sin, right? Okay, then we have, oh, so what's supposed to be in charge of our hearts? It says here, and let the peace of God rule in your hearts. Not anger, not selfishness, but peace. The peace of God, to which also we're called in one body. And what are we supposed to be? If we're going to be in peace, we're going to be what kind of people? Thankful. Thankful people. All the time we're to be thankful. Thankful for everything. And if, because even bad things, right? I had a terrible thing happen in my life. But technically, it wasn't me, but my daughter was, somebody ran a red light on Saturday and hit her car and ruined her car, so it totaled. And the baby was in the car, hit near the baby, and the, my five-year-old grandson. But guess what? They are all fine. Everything is wonderful. So should I get mad at that lady? No. No. I'm supposed to follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man can see the Lord. We're to follow peace. We're not supposed to be out there trying to start angry wars with people, are we? No. Not in any way. Not even with Can't have an angry war with our brother or our sister. We're to be at what's the main what's our word? We're supposed to be at peace. That's right. Be at peace. And we're gonna sing a song now. We're gonna pray and we'll ask God to make sure that we just ask God to help us to live at peace with one another and Make sure that we're all at peace with God. Ready? Three, two, one. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for this day. We thank you, Lord God, that you are the God of peace. And that, Lord God, that you initiated peace with us, first of all, because, Lord, we were your enemies. That you came to us because you loved us so much. You sent your son, Jesus Christ, to pay for our sins so that we could have peace with you. And I thank you, Lord God, that because of the peace that we have with you, we can now have peace with other people. Help us to share the peace of God and the gospel of Christ with everyone we have opportunity to do so. Lord God, we just thank you and praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay. All right, let's stand up. This is our armor of God. Put on the armor of God. Remember, our, yes. my body lies over the ocean. Yes. Stand up and stretch. Okay. Stretch. Oh, we've got to get ready for the battle, so we're going to put on our armor of God. Ready? <gasps> Start with the belt of truth, then the breastplate of righteousness next. Now put on the shoes of the gospel and take the shield of faith. Put on, put on, put on the whole armor of God. Put on, put on, put on the whole armor of God. Remember to put on the helmet, the helmet of salvation. Now take the sword of the Spirit. Which is the word of God. Put on, put on, put on the whole armor of God. Put on, put on, put on the whole armor of God. Who can name the pieces of armor?
the ones you know. Um, it's been a long time since I've done this. Okay, well, what were the two, um, what were the three that we've learned about so far? Um, the truth of the gospel, the other day of righteousness, and the sort of, no, not sort of yet, belt of truth. Belt of truth. What, and you started to say another one. Sort of. Is it that easy? Spirit. Spirit. Which is what? What does that mean? Um, spirit. Which is um, the sort of God. Okay. Abigail, what, what pieces of armor do you remember? Well, I um I just know the, the truth of the gospel and the belt of truth. What did we learn last week? Do you know what this is called? I don't know. Oh, that's okay. It's called the breastplate of righteousness. Good. All right. By the time we're done going through all of those pieces of armor, I think you'll all right, let's oh, let's go over our groups. Let's get it up and do all the motions without us. Okay. Yeah. Yeah.